tonight, we're looking ahead to this weekend. The organizers of the premier Tulsa Tough Cycling Race are bringing a new event to the area that's expected to attract some top athletes. Yeah, but two for you got an exclusive preview of the race Saturday at Zinc Ranch. Jitsel Puente takes us through the course. If you're a fan of the ringing bells and cycling spectacle at Tulsa Tough, you're in for a treat this weekend. You just basically think tough mudder on bicycles. Bicycles going off-road over rough terrain. The executive director of Tulsa Tough is bringing a new race to the area. Our event consists of two days of gravel riding on the gravel roads around Osage County. The Osage Passage cycling race will take place on Zinc Ranch, where the rough terrain is sure to test an athlete's skill. It's going to be a hard course, but we want it to be fair and not have people get hurt or get their equipment torn up. So we're actually mostly spending a lot of time clearing rocks off of the trail. Right now, the finishing touches are coming together at the private land, which consists of more than 40,000 acres. The course will be ready by Saturday when both men and women will be able to ride and compete for the first time in the gravel fondo. We're actually going to have the privilege of being able to ride eight miles inside the ranch on gravel roads inside the Zinc Ranch that have never been ridden by cyclists before. Reporting from Zinc Ranch, Jitzel Puente, to works for you. And that race is plaking, taking place this Saturday. That's a tongue twister. The race is taking place. Try to say that <laughs> four times fast this Saturday and Sunday. But online registration closes on Thursday, 5 p.m. So make sure you get there on time. We have that information over on our website, kjrh.com, and on our free Two Works For You app. All right, coming up, a construction change is coming to Tulsa. How it's going to impact the way you get around one busy intersection of town and what you'll notice after it's completed. Road maintenance starting in South Tulsa coming up. I'll tell you where it's happening and how long it's expected to take. Your top stories right now at 630. Oklahoma Attorney General Mike Hunter is warning that a federal court ruling in Colorado does not mean that women can start going topless in public. The Attorney General says the decision was, a, was specific just to a Colorado ordinance. He says Oklahoma nudity laws still apply. And a boil order is in place for all of McAllister after a break in a major water line caused a shortage on Monday. A 12 inch break was discovered near Taylor Industrial Park. Last night, the city council approved $50,000 for emergency repairs. An Oklahoma Army National Guard unit is preparing for deployment. About 100 members of the 834th Aviation Support Battalion are assigned to Kuwait and Iraq. They'll deploy overseas later this year to provide aviation maintenance support. And smartwatches have a lot of functions, and one woman says one of them saved her life. All new at 630, how she says her watch alerted her to a potentially dangerous medical condition. Now, your two works for you first forecast, brought to you by Route 66 Chevrolet and Nissan of Tulsa. Happy first day of October to you. This Tuesday morning weather is much like the last couple of mornings, rather quiet out there, but we will be talking about some big changes in our weather the next couple of days. Let's take a look outside, looking at our view from a Brookside camp, looking to the north towards downtown. Sky this morning has been mostly clear for us. Good morning, Bixby. You're at 72, 74 in Owasso, 75 mild degrees in Sepulpa, 71 up in Bartlesville. So a lot of 70s to start off the day as we check out the forecast, uh, sending the kids out the door. Shorts going to be needed, upper 70s by 9. Later on today when you pick up the kids uh, after school, temperatures are going to be climbing in the upper 80s. Now I am tracking a pretty strong cold front. We'll talk about a big cool down as well as some rain chances too in that seven day forecast all coming up in about 15 minutes. Let's get a check of our time saver traffic report for you this morning. And thus far, it has been a nice morning heading out the door, not looking at anything in the way of accidents this morning, heading into downtown from Owasso, looking at the drive time right now, about 13 minutes. Corey Travis. I know at least one person who went out and bought a watch uh, because of what happened to me. Steps to how you sleep, but can they save your life? If you have them, you know. Smart gadgets can be a convenient option for keeping tabs on your health. That's right. There are all kinds of devices on the market that track heart rate, rhythm, blood pressure, and a whole lot more. All new this morning, meet a woman who believes that this smartwatch that you see right here is the reason that she's alive. The little things in life, like baking, 
or relaxing with your pet become just a little more special after you bounce back from a health challenge. And Debbie Copeland Bloom had one of those. When we caught this, my heart function was at 25%. She says her ticker wasn't getting the right electrical signals, which hurt how it pumped blood. Symptoms? I didn't feel anything. But Debbie did notice something on her smartwatch. She changed the settings to show beats per minute, and the numbers she saw were troubling. And it was saying that my heart was at 155 to 165 beats per minute all the time. So she bought another device that tracked the same thing. Because I absolutely did not believe I had a heart, high heart rate. Turns out the second backed up the first. So Debbie called her doctor who ran some tests and sent her to the ER. Cardiologist Jefferson Burroughs says Debbie's smartwatch helped them catch a potentially dangerous heart rhythm and may be one of the first cases of a smartwatch saving a life. I believe that the watch saved my life. That's probably not a real high number just yet, but I think that number is going to grow as uh, access to these devices increases. What quickly is becoming more standard, using available gadgets, track a heart rhythm remotely, and transmit the info back to physicians. These type of devices uh, probably much more frequently to help us manage arrhythmias that we already know exist. It's real-time, real-life data, not just doctor's office data. For Debbie, the watch is really watching. I know at least one person who went out and bought a watch uh, because of what happened to me. And something you want to be aware of, you know, the doctor said that devices that track heart rate and rhythm can have a false positive rate up to 30%. So you still need to consult with your doctor about any heart health issues. The, the watches and the things like that are, are a great tool for kind of giving you some warning signs and some alerts, but you definitely want to consult a doctor because yeah. this thing is, is not With technology, <laughs> you can't always rely on it on 100%, right. but most of the time they're pretty spot on. Yeah, for sure. All right.